trying to alter the view of history is not going to change it. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the statue of Robert E. Lee being removed from its base in Richmond, Virginia. They're also going to remove the time capsule inside the base and they're going to replace it. I'll talk about that part a little bit later. But first things first, the statue of Robert E. Lee. Am I for it? Am I against it? What's up? Well, I think the statue should stay where it is because, again, you can't just try to change the view of history and then have that change it. The fact is that he was a great general. Yes, he was. Before the Confederacy, he had been a general in the Union for a very long time. Then he became the Confederate general. And the only reason why he was a Confederate general is because he did not want to fight against his home state, Virginia. He would have easily been the Union general, but he was like, nah, I cannot fight against Virginia, which was at that point kind of the capital of the Confederacy. People say that the Confederates were racist because they were fighting to keep slavery. Well, if both sides of the war have slaves throughout the entire war, is that argument 100% accurate? Slavery only existed for four years of the Confederacy, but it existed for 90 years of the red, white, and blue stars and stripes, the union before there was ever a Confederacy that existed. And then before that, a uh, hundred or more years under the union Jack of the kingdom of great Britain. So I think that we need to just have history be out there. So we understand what's going on here. When I say things like that, people say, oh, you're a liar, ABL. You're just trying to defend the Confederates. I'm just giving you the reality. I'm giving you the truth. History is not about who likes it, who doesn't like it, if it's politically correct. History is history. You can't just remove certain things and be like, oh, okay, it never happened. It still happened. That's just like saying slavery was bad, which we all know it was bad. But because it was bad and because it was evil, we're going to take that out of history books. It's like, no, you can't take slavery out. It actually happened. We don't like slavery. Slavery was ugly. Slavery was bad. But guess what? It happened. We've been able to truly progress and move on beyond that. In the States, at least. But that's a different story. Anyway, we've been able to move beyond that here in the U.S. But it did happen. It's part of history. The same way Robert E. Lee and everybody else was a part of history. So why take the statue down now? I'm totally against it. People talking about that this is a great thing. I see. I saw some guys out there, because I'm from Virginia, I saw some guys out there that I know and local media talking about, yeah, this is a great thing for Virginia. We're progressing forward. Meanwhile, we still got that black-faced governor in office right now, Ralph Northam. See, it's one thing to have Robert E. Lee there, and you want to judge him for becoming a Confederate general, when before that he was a general in the USA for a long time. You want to judge him for that. And, you know, something happened in 1865 or whatever, but a guy that was 25 years old in the 80s with blackface on an clan roll boy in his medical school yearbook, that's, that's no problem. A guy was in office right now as I'm speaking. Okay, so let's just focus where we need to focus. But I digress. Now, to me, one of the funniest things about this beyond the virtue signaling, beyond all the fake woke activism, is a time capsule. Now, as I said from the beginning, there was a time capsule placed in the base of the statue back in, I think, 1887. And it had a lot of Confederate era artifacts. I'm not sure if they're only Confederate, because when you're reading some of these local news reports and national news reports, they say it was 60 Confederate artifacts. But was it only things that were straight from the Confederate army or was it things that happened to exist at that particular point in time? Whatever the case may be, there's a time capsule for back in 1887 and now they're going to remove that and replace it. Now, doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of a time capsule? Shouldn't it be there for a little bit longer? Like, shouldn't it be a thing you kind of find incidentally? Like, let's say, for example, you have a dystopian future you got Mad Max going on and you out there trying to find resources. You're trying to find a can of dog food to be able to eat some bottled water or something, some kind of sustenance after a nuclear winter. And you happen to come across this, this little dirt mound and you start digging and then you say, oh, 
here's this time capsule and you look inside and then you see what was happening a thousand years ago. Like, isn't that the purpose? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But they're going to replace the time capsule with some new and woke stuff. A woke time capsule. Now, I have a list of things that I'm going to put on the screen and we're going to read through it. I've only seen a couple of these. So you're going to get kind of a live reaction. Although it's pre-recorded, you're going to get kind of a live reaction from me. So this is on fox5dc.com. I'll link to this in the box below so you know that it's real and I didn't make it up. But you can see right here at the very top, there's a quote from the blackface governor, Ralph Northam, who's still in office right now, as I said before. And and by the way, before I get started, the only reason why he hasn't, um, the only reason why he's not running again is because you can't in Virginia. You cannot run back-to-back -back gubernatorial campaigns. If not for that, he'd probably be running again right now as we speak. But anyway, the quote says, this monument and its time capsule reflected Virginia in 1890, and it's time to remove both meaning the statue of Robert E. Lee and a time capsule found within the base of the statue. And, but he continues, so that our public spaces better reflect who we are as a people in 2021. This is what Ralph Northam said, again, the blackface governor. Now, here's a list of the new items that are go inside of the time capsule. So they're going to have um, the, quote, ballerina at Lee statue. This is a picture taken on June 5th, 2020, captured and submitted by Marcus Ingram. And I'm not sure what this is. Can we do a little bit of, can we do some Google searching here? Hold on. So, ballerina at the Lee statue. Oh, so I guess that's that right there. So, this picture, hold on, let's put it on the screen. This picture will be in the time capsule. Super woke. So, you, you kind of already see where we're going, right? You, you see where we're going. This is time capsule worthy. Not some really important, you know, like a cell phone or a, a newspaper, some things you will put in there. But now we got to get real woke. Will anybody know what this means um, in the future? And you see all the stuff behind them, ACAB. So basically, they, they defaced the statue with all types of stuff. And they got these woke cheerleaders um, doing their fist up. Let's continue. And you, you, know, you know what the next one, you see, you see on the screen, I don't even got to read it, but I'm going to read it anyway. Expired vial of the COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine and a CDC vaccination record card suggested by Craig uh, Pfeiffer, probably some random white guy anyway, and contributed by the Virginia Department of Health. That's it. It's getting weird. A National Geographic special issue, 2020 in pictures, with cover image of Lee Monument in Richmond, Virginia, suggested by Hope Wolf, submitted by Connor Fresh. It's probably the same type of thing, a tore-up statue, you know, the graffiti on it. And, of course, you got to have this Black Lives Matter sticker submitted by Tangi Austin and Abby at Mede, or at Meet, whatever the name is. Collection of Michael Paul Williams Pulitzer Prize winning columns on Monument Avenue, suggested by Michael Baker and contributed by Michael Paul Williams. How many Michaels are there? Michael Paul Williams, Michael Baker, writing a new history, Kente cloth worn by the commissioners of the congressionally chartered 400 years of African-American history commission and Ghanaian emissary submitted by governor Ralph Northam. <laughs> you know, the funny part about that Kente cloth, it comes from Ghana. They got that part right. But that's from the Ashanti tribe and the Ashanti were slave traders. Shout out to my man, Jermaine Bacio, who was Ghanaian who gave me that piece of information. So if, we're, if it's about being anti-racist, all this, that, and the third, why are you honoring black slave traders in this time capsule? I mean, it's a lot of ignorance going on here, but this is to be expected. New Virginians booklet with portraits of 24 immigrants whose interviews form the core of the Library of Virginia 2020 exhibition submitted by the Library of Virginia. General Assembly Acts of Assembly from the 2020 special session submitted by Senator Jennifer McClellan. Virginia is for lovers pride pin and sticker submitted by the Virginia tourism commission. Now Virginia is for lovers. That's a good thing to put in there, but not the pride pin. I'm going to show you what this actually is. I see this a lot. Virginia is for lovers. So that's right there. What you see that is Virginia for lovers. You know, all, all the other stuff. See this right here, this one with the, with the pride. No, this one right here is what you always see because when you're on the road driving, you'll, you'll see this picture right here. You'll see that a lot. 
just out on the road. I saw that all the time as a kid. But this pride pin thing, that's some super woke stuff that I never was really, that, that never was part of my life growing up. And again, I'm from Virginia, born in West Virginia, but raised in Virginia. But it continues, the protagonist poem in Uncontracted Unified English Braille, written and submitted by Laura Manning. So you got to do something for the disabled, of course. Uh, Better Together, LED board coded by middle school girls at Patrick Henry Community College and submitted by Amanda Broom. Uh, VA Ratify Era Sash and uh, Era 2020 pen submitted by Christine DeRosa and Julia Tanner. You Are Not Alone, Pink Heart Print found on Broad Street, which is in Richmond, in front of the Institute of Contemporary Art on May 30th, 2020, after a night of protests in Richmond created by Studio 23, submitted by X, Y, and Z. Election officer badge for 2020 general election. So what do you think it's going to be for, for, for some Democrats who voted for Hillary Clinton um, or Joe Biden? Same thing. Miami Avenue hip hop album by Noah O and Taylor Whitelow suggested by Demario Spurlock. <laughs> so you got to, so I guess they put out a, a rap song or album about that particular area where the statue is. Cause that's where it's at Miami Avenue. Prayer beats left by a family member who passed away from the virus. So cringy. Danville, which is way out far western part of Virginia. That's where my granddad's from, by the way. Shout out to Danville. Not Danville, pardon me. He's from, like, South Boston, but same thing. Danville Public Schools, quote, First Lady face mask submitted by First Lady Pamela Northam. And speaking about Danville, I think that's where Joe Biden said the infamous um, they gonna put y'all back in chains. I think that was in Danville, or right in that same area. But we keep on moving. Photos of the June fourth, twenty twenty press conference announcing the removal of the statue. So you get the picture. I don't need to go through all of these right here, but but you get the the general point, right? All super woke stuff, uh, poems and nothing conservative at all. Nothing from the opposite side. LGBT stuff and. Just, you know, a piece of the tarp from the, you know, just dumb stuff. So my thing is, okay, is that a good time capsule? I, I mean, you, you guys tell me, is that a good time capsule? I don't think so. I think there should be more things from this particular era, not just um, virus vials and rap albums and um Pictures of the monument being desecrated. That's all just woke. Everything that's done, in my humble opinion, surrounding the removal of the statues, is all just to appear to be woke, appear to be virtuous, appear to be on the side of the so-called downtrodden. That's what it's all about. It's not about trying to remove racist and progress forward. It's about trying to replace one thing with an image that, Others, well, it's just like what they do in the Middle East as I close. In the Middle East, when they conquer a place, what do they do? They tear down the old statues. They rename things. And the purpose is to change the culture into what they want it to be. Now, some may say that's a great thing, but is it a great thing? Being in Virginia, I was a little kid when it was mostly a red state. And as it became more and more blue, it got worse. So when you replace some of the things that have already been there since I was a little boy and to what we got going on now, woke rap albums and woke pictures of statues being demolished, are we going forward or are we going backward? I think we're going backward. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about the new woke time capsule? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. How do you feel about... The statue being removed, should it be removed? Should it stay? Uh, whatever your views on that are, let me know. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. I think that we don't need to have the statue be removed. Keep the statues right there. Keep everything up. Don't take nothing down. Because I want to know, hey, who was that? What did he do? What's going on? History is history. You can try to change it. You can try and alter it. But ultimately, you can't. There's no time machine to go back and to change what happened in the past. Keep everything up, the good, the bad, the ugly, and we can reflect on how we feel about it. Taking the statue down is not going to heal or fix anything. All you're going to do is just leave room for people to try and 
demolish things that were there, demolish things that had been kind of part of the history to create new history. Why do that? History can't change no matter how hard you try. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.